Whenever the state of the city comes around every year, uh, so our administrator, Mike Grimes, you know, he always likes to warn the city employees uh, just prior to that that we get getting a lot of calls from the mayor and don't want all these facts and figures and PowerPoints. And then he especially warns Jane Houses, uh, my administrative assistant, who puts the whole PowerPoint presentation together. And, uh, you know, it, it usually comes out very nice and smooth and informative. But when you start out with like 462 slides explaining the, uh, the state of the city, and we got to narrow it down according to Doug Lane, he said I've got six or seven minutes time. So I thought that it would be, uh, I thought we're going to have to really do some consolidation. But what we want to do uh, tonight is give you a recap as far as what we've done in 2013. And, uh, and we also want to uh, tell you where we're going in, in 2014, and then give you an idea of some of the challenges that we faced in the past, because there have been many challenges. But I think what's, uh, what makes North Canton special is that we always find a way, there always seems to be like another diamond in the rough, so to speak, that we seem to uncover year after year, which allows us to continue to attain the goals to overcome what I would uh, say would be some impossible, what some might say is an impossible challenge. And I think when I was getting ready uh, uh, this afternoon for this, you know, I had come over with the PowerPoint and, and practicing, and I was trying to set up where I was going to put the water, you know, and, and where I'm going to put the, uh, you know, 400 slides or so that were all stapled together, and I just couldn't seem to, to get, it, get it right. And uh, Jane had mentioned to me, she said, you know, the there's a screen on the tabletop here, so you don't have to flip uh, each one. And so, you know, I think it kind of illustrates what goes on in the city of North Canton. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of talent that we have in the city. There's a tremendous amount of resources. And really, it's those, those acres of diamonds, so to speak, that are right here in the city. And it's just a matter of us coming together and working together and trying to identify what our strengths are. And that's what really allows us to be successful. And so what I'll start with is, um, first off, I'd like to thank Walsh University for hosting this. This has become uh, somewhat of an annual event here at Walsh University. They're our second largest employer. They also have uh, the number one basketball, female girls, uh, girls, ladies basketball team in the country at Walsh University. And uh, President Richard Jusson has really done a fantastic job of growing Walsh and expanding it. And, uh, and not only is that a benefit to students in Stark County and throughout the state of Ohio, but they have students all across the world that come and visit here and to learn and to get educated. In addition to that, it's also North Canton's second largest employer. So there's a tremendous amount of income tax revenue that allows our, our tax base to grow. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Doug Lane, always does a fantastic job of getting this program together. and. Uh, uh, one thing that I've noticed uh, about Doug is that he really has that strength from a promotional standpoint. And so with your role on Channel 11, I mean, that's like nonstop promotion of the city of North Canton with our North Canton City Schools. And by the way, all of the camera men out here today, they're all students at Hoover High School. So this will be playing at Channel 11 on North Canton Television, and it's run by our students and also Tom Wilson. And uh, we appreciate the work that you, that you students do here tonight. Our city council, we have our city council members here today. And in North Canton, we've, I've always believed that when you bring people together, that's the start. And when you get people working together, that's really what brings success. And when you look at the obstacles that we've had in the city of North Canton, I think what, what has allowed us to overcome the obstacles is the people that you see here, our city council members. We have Jeff Peters. Jeff is our Ward 2 councilman and also our new uh, council president this year. And uh, and Jeff has grown up in the city of North Canton, went to Hoover High School, and he knows the city uh, inside now. And he's been a great representative to the city of North Canton. We have Doug Foles. Doug, if you ask Doug, he'll tell you that he is a park guy. So anything that has to do with parks, at least over all of his years of service, uh, Doug will tell you that uh, parks is his number one priority. And also the, the uh, residents in Ward 1. And uh, Doug started his career out there in the city of Canton in the park department, and now he's over at Springfield. So he brings a tremendous amount of uh, experience in that area. And then we have Marsha, Marsha Kiesling. She's not only um, our counselor at large, but she's also a nurse practitioner and uh, a mother of her children and a coach and a multitude of different things 
uh, that she does in the city. But it brings up a, a lot of experience when you look at uh, uh, the, the experience that she's had as a council person because she served for a number of years. So we appreciate having Marsha here with us. And then we have John Snyder. He has the biggest smile definitely uh, on, the, uh, on the chart here. And John, I think has served in every position as council president, vice president, finance chairperson, uh, every position I think uh, that council can hold brings a lot of experience, particularly with the finances. And Mark Soretta, he's also a uh, lifelong resident in North Canton. And uh, he has experience uh, growing up at the Y, going to Hooper High School. And, uh, and when you have people that, that grow up in the town and they understand the needs of the residents and the history and the culture, that's really what allows us to build on that tradition of excellence. And that's something that Mark brings. He's also, uh, uh, he has a tremendous amount of energy. And you know all those entrance signs that you find across the city? Uh, Mark raised the money and had them all put together. And I think that's, that's going to be a landmark that will stay here for years to come. And Stephanie, Stephanie Warren, uh, Stephanie's one of our newest council members. And uh, she has uh, three children, triplets. So that in itself, raising triplets, is uh, an incredible feat. And, um, but Stephanie has a lot of experience, I think, from a regional standpoint. When you look at uh, where she works now in Leadership Star County, bringing people together, teaching them about Star County, teaching others about working together. And I think that that really has been Stephanie's uh, greatest asset. And she is very familiar with public service because her husband has also been newly appointed as a Star County Police Judge, Judge Warren. And so there's a lot of, uh, they certainly have a mindset for public service. When you look at the goals that we had here in the city, especially after Hoover left, was, uh, you know, we refer to that as kind of like the double whammy. In 2008, we lost the Hoover district, or the Hoover, uh, the Hoover company, rather. And when we lost the Hoover company, we lost about 23% of the city's income. And it was, it was really a major, major financial blow to the city. Uh, we had to decide how, how are we going to manage this. Well, one of the things that the council members at the time, and I must say that uh, back in 2005 when I started serving as mayor, uh, the income tax collection was 1.5%. And I had put together a presentation uh, thinking that we were going to have to raise the income tax. And because I, at the time, I just didn't really see any other way out of this. And the council was very committed to keeping it at 1.5%. And um, so after a uh, result of going through this, we decided to keep it at 1.5%. It was really one of the best decisions that we made. And the reason being is that when you keep your income taxes low, it truly makes a difference when you're trying to attract new businesses. And you can see the other uh, municipalities, and this isn't just within Stark County, but when you look at the municipal income tax rates throughout the state of Ohio, a majority of them are like at 1.8, 2%. You have some that are 3% and one that's uh, 3 and a quarter percent. So we've been able to keep our income tax at the same low rate uh, as we've had for years. When you look at the two goals that we have in the city, it's very simple. When I first started serving as mayor, uh, I knew that we had, to, we had to remain focused and we had to keep things simple. Every time we make a decision in the city of North Canton, we, we have to meet one or both of these goals. The first one, bring new jobs to the city of North Canton. Why do we want jobs? When we have jobs, we can pay income tax. Income tax pays for our police, fire, EMS, our city services. And then the second thing is, is a leaner, more cost-effective uh, cost uh, government. Because whenever you see organizations, whether it's a municipality or even a business, they'll try to make that decision. Do we, do we reduce our, uh, our operating costs? Do we try to raise revenue? And what we have learned is that you really have to do both. You have to find ways to raise or increase your revenue, but then you have to become more cost-efficient and effective. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to succeed. Or in this case, you really won't be able to survive. When we look at our top 10 employers, uh, this is really very interesting because our, our number one employer, of course, is the best education system in the world. North Canton uh, Board of Education, they're our number one employer. Secondly, Walsh University. Walsh University, back in 1990, that's the first year that they were annexed into the city of North Canton. So annexation is an important part of the city's uh, long-term growth for the future. Uh, so Walsh University is in there now, uh, number two employer. St. Luke's, uh, St. Luke's is in a growth phase. They're growing and they're expanding. So when you see this here, you can look forward to uh, uh, a much larger facility and greater services for those that are aging. And then we have uh, North Canton Medical Foundation. 
North Canton Medical Foundation, the good news is, is that uh, they've been in North Canton for a number of years, but then they were uh, up for sale. We were concerned we were going to lose those jobs. Eric Bowles, our economic development director, Mike Grimes, uh, worked very hard to keep those jobs here. And fortunately, Altman Hospital bought them, and now they're staying in town. And uh, then, of course, you have the city of North Canton. But if you look at Myers Control Power, True Bridge, and Developmental Disabilities, those, those three organizations, they were not here. They were not in the city of North Canton prior to the Hoover Company leaving. So we have at least three employers that are in our top 10 that were brought here after the Hoover facility closed and left in 2008. And Mullinax Fort, that was another project that started back, uh, back in the late 90s where they were looking at a new location and that property was then brought into the city of North Kent and they've made the top 10 as well. Now this is really interesting. When you look at the challenges that we face as far as our revenue, I want to try to give you a, a a very simple picture of our city's finances. Um, you basically have three separate funds. You've got a water fund, and we collect water revenue from our, uh, from our water uh, customers, but that has to stay with water. And then you've got sewer, and that stays separate uh, because you can't collect sewer money or water money and pay for police or fire or EMS. You've got to keep those funds separate. So really the main fund that represents the city of North Canton and the status of where we're at is the general, uh, general fund. It's kind of like our uh, large checking account for the city. It's how we pay for the majority of our bills. And if you look, back in 2007, fortunately we were able to spend $9.1 million in the city of North Canton. That was the highest that we've had, uh, I think actually in history, but certainly uh, uh, since 2000, the year 2000. But you look at the breakdown, you have the income tax collection, which is 46% of the total pie. What's the next largest piece of the pie? Right here, the red, inheritance tax. So when an individual passes, they leave there's an estate behind, and there's income tax, or there's estate tax that is paid. This has been like the Christmas bonus, so to speak, for the city every year, because Obviously, we don't know how much that is going to bring in, but every year we've had consistently over eight hundred thousand dollars, four hundred actually four hundred thousand to one point eight million in one year off of the estate tax. And when you look at, watch how this pie changes. See this number right here. I'm going to go. We're at two thousand and seven. So this is nearly seven years ago. Now, when I change this slide, see the general fund right now nine point one. Now here's expected for twenty fourteen. 6.7, that's a 25% decline from 2007. So that's our major checking account. That's what we're able to spend for next year, 6.7, 25% decline. You see what the burden that puts on the income tax, why we keep talking about we've got to bring in new jobs in the city of North Canton, because now it's 70%, it was 46, now it's 70% we're dependent upon the, uh, the income tax collection. And as you can see, there's no red with the inheritance tax. That's gone. The state eliminated that. Here's a closer look at our uh, income tax. Income tax back in uh, 2007 million dollars. And you can see we had a drop there. Uh, and I think this was actually initially due to change to the Hoover uh, company. But then it started to pick back up. And then in 2008, that's when Hoover closed their doors. Now watch what happens to our income tax. Down, down, this was our lowest year, 2010, $5.4 million. And this is when we started to work on the Hoover District, employed a new plan to bring jobs to the city of North Canton, and now we're growing. Now we're coming back up in 2011, then 2012. 2013, we're at $6.6 million a year. But still, we're, we're so much lower than where we were at. 13 years ago. It's a significant drop. But the good news is we are on the upward trend. Again, the general fund, when you look at the breakout here, income tax, for uh, for this year, 2013, it was 62% inheritance tax. On average, well, this was 2013, it was 487,000, but again, we had one year, 2008, it was $1.8 million. That's a lot of road paving. And then the local government fund, that's been decreased. That at one point was $1 million a year. 
That's rock. A closer look at it, you see these uh, lines going up and down. Here is, the, the red line is the inheritance tax. So you can see, there really hasn't been a year that we haven't collected $400,000 for the city for inheritance tax. Right here, this year, 2006, it was uh, 1.5 million. But then we still remain pretty steady. On average, it's $800,000 a year. Then, of course, in 2011, we had $1.9 million that was not expected to the city's uh, uh, checkbook. Now, you can see this, uh, this started to drop because these are carryovers that are, that are being brought in. But now, in 2014, we really shouldn't even have a uh, dot there because there is no more inheritance tax. It's gone. Oftentimes, people would say, well, how are you continuing to function when, you know, when you're... Uh, uh, you know, when you're losing revenue and you're trying to bring it up in the upswing, it's really the, the inheritance tax that kept us afloat. Right, then you look at the, uh, the, the blue line or the purple line here, that's local government funds. We really love the state in these years because it kept going up. Right there, we had a million dollars. Okay? And that's, so what, five, six years ago. But then the state changed their strategy. Now it's dropping, going down, going down, going down. Here we are, 2014, uh, 300, or 250,000, $300,000. That's another big hit to the city. Fortunately, the green are property values. They dipped here with the economy, but now it's a new property valuation by the county auditor. We're, we're moving back up. But it's been pretty constant at $800,000. General fund, again, this is another look at the general fund. Again, this is the city's uh, checkbook. Our best year, in uh, really the best year that we've had was 2007, $9.1 million. Now you might say, why is it up, why is it down? Again, that's the inheritance tax. It fluctuates. But then again, it's gone in 2014. So what happens? 2007, $9.1 million. 2014, again, our checkbook, instead of being at 9.1, it's down to 6.7. The good thing is we balance the budget for 2014. Uh, and this is, we use this slide, this is kind of like uh, the amount that we have in our checking account or in our general fund. And you can see that even though we've struggled over the years, this is a pretty steady amount here. Again, a high amount, this was the year that we had the 1.8 uh, million in, in uh, inheritance tax, so it went up. Uh, but then, of course, as the inheritance tax declined, now here we are in 2014. We'll still have money in the reserves, but we don't have a whole lot. If we continue on the path that we're on right now, we're projected to have a $960,000 deficit. And I don't mean to sound so alarming, because I remember back in 2005 or 2006 when they gave the state of the city, this red line and this red line was here at 06 and 07. So again, we find a way to get things done here in the city of North Canada and I'm confident that we'll be able to do the same here in the years to come. Uh, building permits, you know, again, when we try to find those diamonds in the rough, things that we can uh, capitalize on, we look at our building department and the permits department. Eric Bowles, he's our economic development director, he also serves as our uh, superintendent of permits. This is good news, this shows that the economy is growing. New residential single family homes, 18 in the city of North Canton for 2013. That's $5.7 million of, of uh, new construction. And then, of course, uh, remodeling, another million dollars. And then in commercial, we had $265,000 worth of new buildings. And then with uh, commercial improvements, $2.9 million. The good news is we had $11 million of new construction remodeling uh, of facilities in 2013. How does that translate to the city? Obviously, newer facilities, bigger facilities, more employees, raise our income tax. But in addition to that, we've also raised, the city council moved ahead to raise the permit fees. And whenever you're going to build, and whether it's a new house, a new commercial building, you gotta get a building permit. We had 329 of those, you gotta get an electrical permit. Now again, sometimes people don't like the idea of having these inspections and permits, but when you look at permitting, that's what keeps buildings safe. That's what prevents the roof from collapsing, that's what prevents uh, from fires uh, starting inadvertently because of a poor design. So these are all, uh, these permits are to ensure that the public and that the residents are safe. On a positive note though, 
With all of these uh, permits, we collected $464,000 in permit fees. So that's been another excellent source of revenue for the city. Um, 2013 capital improvements. Oftentimes, uh, people would uh, mention to me that uh, whenever they were traveling down uh, Main Street, uh, going to the city of Canton, they had those the signals, the traffic signals were lined up and you could move it pretty smoothly. So it was a goal of ours to have this in the city of North Canton. And um, the only thing is to synchronize these lights and then to have the cameras here, which are down in dispatch, and look at all the intersections, $892,000 for that system. Now my son told me, he said, there's gotta be a less expensive way to do this than 192,000 with today's technology. But it is really very advanced technology. Uh, Jim Benicus had applied for grants. The good news, this is what I love about our city, $892,000, no cost. No cost to the city of North Canton. Why? Because we applied for a federal highway grant, paid for 80%, and then of course you've got to come up with a match. But uh, Jim Benicus, our city engineer, and also our goals, very creative in grant writing, so they took the 20% match and applied that we would normally have to pay on the city's behalf. Well, we took an Ohio Public Works grant and we paid for our match. So again, no cost. And that's in the process of being developed, so it's not quite in place yet. Uh, then water line, uh, 2013 water line replacement. Uh, we want to keep the, the, the city water lines in good condition. We don't like varsity water, we want good fire flow. We want uh, safe drinking water 24 seven. And uh, here's the projects that we did in 2013. This is the investment by the city, $1.1 million. When we collect our income tax, 20, approximately 20% 20 of our income tax must go towards capital improvements, roads, um, uh, neighborhood streets, water lines, sewer projects. So that portion of our income tax uh, went for these projects. In addition, now this again is the bonus, that's from our inheritance tax, $590,000. Well, we planned on this, we didn't plan on this amount. So we uh, paid $590,000 on the road in 2013. Then the uh, completion of Apple Grove, all the way, it's, uh, it started at Apple Grove there by the BP station McDonald's, and uh, this year we, uh, we got the shot, it's the midway point, it goes past Arby's, and then up there is where you have uh, Drug Mart and uh, Family Video. That whole project is $3.3 million. Again, you can't ask for anything better here, because one of our focuses too, I should have added that as a third goal, is applying for grants. We have become really, really good at applying for grants to the city. $3.3 million, zero cost to the taxpayers of North Kent. No cost for this whole project. Uh, what's Maple? This is another surprise. This came from the, one of the representatives, uh, Christina from the Department of Ohio, Ohio Department of Transportation. She uh, informed us that there was a grant 100% for municipal road funds grant, we applied for it. And this is right at the entrance of Price Park, and this heads uh, down to the city limits there, uh, going towards like Kane Toyota. And uh, we repaid that for 134,000 no cost to the city. And a recap for 2013, $1 million in water line replacement. And I want to say John Hockensmith, John is here, and, uh, and also our new superintendent is here, Mark Leichhammer. Uh, Rich Steiner will have retired as a water superintendent, and John took over as the interim superintendent. He did a great job, and then Mark Lightham, when we talked about diamonds in the rough, uh, initially he had applied for the position, and after interviewing a number of candidates throughout uh, in Northeast Ohio, uh, we actually recruited Mark because we knew that he would be the best fit for the city. So I want to thank both of you for the work that you've done the past the six months. Again, uh, 2013, we have uh, $5 million in uh, road improvements, total $6 million, but of course, what we love in our kit is our grant money, $4 million, and no cost to the taxpayers. What can we expect in 2014? 2014, we're going to invest $2.5 million dollars in water line projects. Again, all the water lines, we want them at least 8 inches or larger, so you get the sufficient flow and pressure, especially if there's a fire. Uh, hopefully not uh, very many of those. And then uh, uh, 2.6 million we're gonna have in road improvements. Total 5.1 million, but again, 2.4 million in grant money. That's really helpful to the city. 
Our fire and EMS department. The calls continue to go here. 2012, we had a total of 2,688 calls. They went up in 2013 to 2,850 calls. These are the fire calls, 4, 6, and 5, and uh, they went up to 558 uh, uh, in 2013. And then, of course, the EMS went up accordingly as well. What we started to do is we're more aggressive in the billing. Whenever there's an ambulance call, we, uh, we bill the insurance companies or the, or the, uh, uh, the person that's being transported, if at all possible. 541,000 uh, increase in that, in that billing. Police Department, they have over a 90% good and excellent rating according to the city survey. And uh, John Henrick right there, uh, he, he looks like he's the happiest one. He should be because John was appointed as traffic officer of the year. 22 agencies, law enforcement agencies, throughout Star County nominated different individuals and John uh, was considered to be uh, the traffic officer of the year. And then we had the Honorable Invention Awards here with uh, Matt Buzzer, Justin Brumbaugh, Scott Carroll, Cody Dollinger, Chad Maserick, and Philip Taylor. And you might say, well, how does that translate to the city of North Canton? When these young men, and uh, the majority of them are, are new, uh, that we have, when they're writing traffic tickets, which I know some of you don't like, you know, uh, when you're receiving them, hopefully none of you here are receiving traffic uh, tickets. But uh, we had a 5% increase in traffic citations. So these guys are up there doing their job. Also, a 7% increase in warnings. So they don't always get tickets, you know, they do get warnings. But what does that do for the city? There's two areas that this impacts the city. Number one, the crashes, traffic crashes. When you're writing citations, they go up, but when you're writing warnings, the traffic accidents go down. They went down by 18%. Another side benefit, which of course uh, is helpful, is when there's more tickets that are being written to keep our city safe, uh, that increases the revenue uh, in our courts, in our uh, court fees. Went from 142 to 185,000. And now right here we have uh, Tim Fox, he's our new full-time law director. I think that's one of the best decisions that council made this year, is taking a part-time law director, establishing a full-time law director. And he's been able to dedicate uh, all of his time uh, working exclusively to the city of North Canton. We have David Ness, who also serves as the mayor of support magistrate. If I was in there as mayor, I'd probably be inclined to give everybody a pass on their on their uh, tickets and citations, which really isn't uh, the proper thing to do. So we appoint a magistrate, David Diss, who does this uh, every uh, twice a month uh, with Tim Fox. Now, this is what, now when you talk about how we try to uh, adjust our operations and uh, streamline they can work cost efficient and effective, we had a private company that we hired to collect delinquent taxes. They collected $4,272 or $270. Tim Fox, who has experience doing this, said, I think I can do this on my own. And with the income tax department and with uh, Karen Alger and our finance department, uh, $79,000. I mean, that's a times 20 increase. And, and that money is, uh, you know, that's the type of revenue that we need. So people that aren't paying their taxes, we found a way to make sure that they do that, which is good. Uh, curbside recycling. Again, I think this is another great decision that City Council made this year. And it was a bold move, a very, very bold move. Because uh, normally when we have our, our waste collection, it's unlimited. The residents would put their own container out. Oftentimes the, the challenges with that is that, uh, you know, you have trash cans and lids rolling down the street. Uh, you'd have uh, vermin that would get into the waste baskets and uh, garbage uh, bins and, you know, it was just a, a number of problems associated with that. So, council had approved this new collection system. This is the recycling bin, 65 gallon. This is the waste bin, 95 or 65 gallon. But look what happened to our recycling rates. This is under the old system. This is just, this started back in September here, so it didn't even have a full year. But we're projecting you know, over 1,100 tons in the recycling if we continue at this rate. It's really increased by over 20%. We do get uh, $45 a ton, so we're expecting about forty-five dollars to $50,000 in grant funds to enhance our uh, recycling and also our waste haul. Last, uh, we have uh, annexation 1994. People will ask, how are you going to grow this city? How are you going to build our tax base? Every municipality has the ability, has that right given to them 
but I do high revised code to annex property. And what we want to do is we never really like to aggressively go after a property owner that doesn't want to be in the city. We like to take property owners that desire to come into the city uh, because we can offer them utilities like the, especially water runs. So when they desire to come into the city, of course, we, we gladly welcome them. Uh, you can see in the red, that's areas that we've annexed since 1994, 496 acres. Another closer look at this, you look at the Hoover property back in 1994. Now this is owned by Walsh University, 241 acres. Bayberry Woods, 11 acres. Mercy Medical, one of our top employers. We annexed them in 1996. Uh, we have Walsh University. We first annexed them in 1990, the original 59 acres. And then since then, uh, we've added on uh, to Walsh University, second largest employer. Gaslight Circle, 64 <laughs> acres there. Oakshire Place, these are all residents, residential homes. 46 acres. The, the Sanctuary, 107 acres. Uh, then uh, the last, uh, one of, one of uh, you know, the most uh, visible uh, successes is uh, the Sheets Gas Station. I mean, that is a hub for uh, people to get their gas and high school kids to get the inexpensive hot dogs. <laughs> Going back to that real quick, a total since 1990, 556 acres the city has annexed. So we've been, we have been very aggressive. But you can see it's a little bit, like, I'd like to explain it, it's like fishing. You throw the rod in the water, and you just never know, you know, what property you're gonna be able to annex from one year to the next. All right, um, when we're looking at cost efficiency, we had Jim Davis, Jim has done a great job with Rich Roads and Brian Hill in our service department. Uh, excellent job. And what they did is, they employed a system of uh, electronically coming up with a, uh, a spreading system to more efficiently spread our salt. Last year, we had 28 snow events where we had to call out the, uh, the snow crew, 28. We used 5,500 tons of salt, $282,000 in the city. An annual event cost of $10,000. Now, of course, we had one heck of a winter here in Ohio. We had 67. We doubled, more than doubled the snow events. But look what we did with the salt. 3,600 tons. Almost, you know, cut it by like 30, 40%. Now part of that was due, there wasn't a whole lot of salt that was available. Um, so that helped. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we did more efficiently spread it with our, with our salt system, this electronic system here. And uh, if, if we would have done it the same way that we did last year, 67 events at $10,000, that's $670,000. It just would have broke the bank. But under this, we, we lowered the cost per event, $10,000 down to $2,700. And uh, that's a real and actual savings of $97,000 to the city. And then with our fire chief, we have Chief Bacon, and we also have our uh, assistant chief, uh, Fowler, who's here. And I think we may have some other uh, firefighters and paramedics here. Uh, and please forgive me if I'm not mentioning everybody because I can tell you something. We cannot do this job without our employees. Can't have it. Not have it. And, uh, and Justine also, Justine is here with her two children. She's the administrative assistant to my crimes. And she's the one that helped me get all the slides together as well, too. So I appreciate your help. Uh, here's what we did. We asked the fire chief, we've got to find a way to more cost efficiently provide fire services. Calls are going up, expenses are going up. So here's what we did. We had three full-time fire inspectors. One of our fire inspectors took a teaching job. We didn't fill the position. Another fire inspector, we asked if he would move to the water treatment plant. Now he's a wastewater operator. He has uh, other opportunities to increase actually his, his, uh, his training and his income, so it worked out very well for him. We didn't fill those two positions. We're down to one full-time fire inspector. We saved $120,000 just by not filling these two positions. But then someone would say, now you think about uh, bringing uh, a new business to the city. Bringing $120,000 revenue, that's like bringing 150,000 or 100, uh, 150 new jobs at about 45,000 a piece. Not an easy thing to do. Now it wasn't easy eliminating these two positions, but we saved 120,000. So now you might say, how do you do the fire inspections? Right here, we had we had fire, uh, we had paramedics. Now there, we have out of the nine paramedics, one was a firefighter. Now four are firefighter paramedics. 
So they're doing inspections while doing their paramedic service throughout the day. That's how we're saving money. All right, and uh, we're coming to the close here now. 2014 projects, $2.6 million in water lines and sewers. These are the streets that we're doing on those. Hillcrest and Roy, the residents are going to be very pleased to have their water lines replaced and the streets redone. Again, 50% of it paid for through grants. Uh, East Maple Street, I mean, this is another example. We're going to be redoing this whole project here, which will uh, help to enhance that area, widen the street. Uh, it'll certainly dress it up, make it stronger uh, for years to come, you know, for the heavy traffic. But also, it's what attracts new businesses to North Canton. And a $2.2 million project, again, this is where our city engineer and economic development director, they come up with this very creative matching system and try to explain it to me. I can never really understand it, but I do know that I benefit as well as the residents of North Canton with that match making grant uh, procedure. Again, no cost to the city. And this, uh, this is our last slide here. This is the last slide. Um, when you look at the Hoover facility, since uh, 2009, 2008, 2009, with all the new jobs, over 800 new jobs, we're bringing in $328,000 in income tax. It's not an easy feat to do. I mean, we had to utilize grant funds in order to do that, and uh, a lot of work, but we have been successful. Uh, and also Panera Bread, I love Panera. I'm sure, I hope a lot of you do too, so that you can visit Panera and have them hire more employee, employees and raise our income tax here. But they're going to be coming on Main Street, and they'll be having a drive-thru, uh, which is one of the few that has a drive-thru. I like one more slide. This is the last one. Um, when you look at the Hoover District, this is, I think this is the best decision the City Council made uh, in the last two years. We had a $5 million job ready sites grant. They said, okay, $3 million goes to improve the facility, $2 million goes to improve the roads. You know, the first $3 million, we spent that right away. The developers came in, they redesigned the, the Hoover District, we transformed it from an industrial site to a state-of-the-art office complex. They said, do you have any more grant funds? We can keep bringing jobs in. But we had $2 million left. But it was all to go towards roads. Well, we went to the state and we said, can we take a million out of the two roads and we'll put that back into the building so that we can bring the Ohio Bureau of Workman's Compensation, which is $65,000 of income tax revenue when they arrive this summer with 110 new employees. But then our council members you know, asked me, they said, what are you gonna do about the other million that you took from the road project? I said, don't worry about that. Jim and is going to figure that out. We're going to match somehow, somehow. And he did do that. And so, and also Eric Bull. So it really worked out very well. But that's the type of uh, strategies that we're employing uh, that is really bringing the success to the city. And again, I, um, first off, I want to thank you all for coming here tonight. And it really is, I consider it a privilege. It's not a right to serve the people of North Canada. It's a privilege that I'm given, and just like our council members, it's the people that put us in this office. And it's not our office, we're just here for a short period of time. But I can tell you on behalf of myself, and I, and I feel comfortable speaking with the, the council members, uh, everybody's working really hard to try to do the best that we can for the city. And, uh, and I just appreciate uh, being able to serve all of you. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll close out, and uh, I can stay after for any questions and we'll let Mr. Hartenstein, leader of the best school district.